Hi, David Rosenberg here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this CAP, or Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Smart Take, we'll take a very close look at the long-term effects of methylphenidate on sleep in children and adolescents with ADHD. This is so important as stimulants such as methylphenidate are still the most commonly prescribed treatment for ADHD worldwide, and methylphenidate has also been widely reported to be associated with sleep problems. But the more we learn about ADHD, it's turning some of our prior misconceptions on its head. Namely, sleep patterns in ADHD seem to be disrupted whether or not a person is on medication or psychostimulants. That is, ADHD itself, with or without medication, is clearly associated with significant and serious sleep disturbances. So in our clinical program, we always get a detailed pre-treatment baseline sleep inventory and assessment on all of our patients with ADHD who require treatment before initiating that treatment. While this is critical, our experience getting a number of referrals, second opinions, tell us that in many busy primary care and psychiatry practices, this is one of the most often overlooked and missed areas of baseline assessment, meaning that oftentimes the sleep assessment is not done at baseline, which can obviously hinder accurate and precise identification of whether or not the stimulant or methylphenidate is causing sleep disturbance if you don't know the baseline sleep functioning of the child or adolescent. So this has really taken prior thinking that what we presumed once was a key side effect of methylphenidate. Is it really a side effect? How common is it? Or is it more reflecting the illness, the ADHD itself? But to date, there's been strikingly few studies looking at the long-term impact of methylphenidate and other psychostimulants on sleep disturbances. And so this article in particular is a real advance because it conducted a two-year naturalistic prospective pharmacovigilance multi-center study of over 1,400 participants. And they included three groups. The first group included children and adolescents with ADHD who were intending to start methylphenidate. A second group was ADHD children and adolescents not intending to treat with methylphenidate, and a third non-ADHD control group. So what did they find? Well, first of all, and perhaps not surprisingly, the only group that showed a significant increase in sleep from baseline was the control group. There were no significant differences in sleep between ADHD children and adolescents treated with methylphenidate and ADHD children not treated with methylphenidate. So what the results showed is that sleep problems are very common in ADHD, but there were no significant negative long-term effects. Interestingly, and in contrast to what we might have expected, there actually appeared to be possible improvement of sleep in children with ADHD treated long-term with methylphenidate compared to children and adolescents with ADHD not treated with methylphenidate. So this is important, right, because it suggests that the illness itself, the ADHD, has profound and significant effects, adverse negative effects on sleep, and that effective treatment with a medicine such as methylphenidate, in contrast to what was previously believed, might actually improve sleep in children and adolescents with ADHD. Now, of course, some children might experience negative long-term sleep impact from methylphenidate that's not detectable in these type of group assessments. So we need to always monitor each child individually and carefully as no two children are the same and different children can experience different effects when treated with the same medication. It's also really important to assess for medication interactions as many children with ADHD will be treated with more than one medication. It's important to take into account comorbidity. So many patients with ADHD have depression and anxiety. 
both of which can definitely impair sleep. The bottom line, though, is that this is a highly complex area, but what we should be reassured about for those of us treating children and adolescents with ADHD in the trenches is that long-term use of methylphenidate does not appear to make sleep worse and may actually improve sleep compared to children and adolescents with ADHD not treated with medication, underscoring again how vital it is to conduct pre-treatment sleep inventories and assessments prior to initiating treatment in children and adolescents with ADHD. Mm -hmm.